Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Dr. Shook here, and today we are going to talk about we're going to talk about gallbladder disease, and it's a major problem that we see in in people that are autoimmune. It is, I think, it is the most common surgery in the in the United States. Having your gallbladder removed is uh, very very common. It occurs very frequently, and we need to talk about this whole this whole process of of some of the things that contribute to gallbladder disease and then the importance of the gallbladder because it's not just an extra organ, but it can cause a lot of problems uh, and that's really created by some other things. And in particular, we're going to talk about Hashimoto's and we're going to talk about this connection between gluten, Hashimoto's and the risk of gallbladder surgery. Okay, So one of the things that you need to know is that Hashimoto's, having Hashimoto's alone increases the risk of gallbladder surgery. Okay, so you might not have known that, but people that have Hashimoto's are to have a greater likelihood of having their gallbladder removed, having some kind of gallbladder dysfunction or disease. So one of the things that we know is that there's a connection between gluten sensitivity and Hashimoto's. And we know that it's um, linked to Hashimoto's, like gluten sensitivity is linked to Hashimoto's. And about 20 to 40 percent of the general population is believed to have a gluten sensitivity. Now, the thing that's really interesting is that there's a lot of confusion and um, like what is a sensitivity? Like what's gluten, what, what is a sensitivity, right? So one of the things that, that you're, will commonly gets confused, when we're talking about a sensitivity, we're talking about measuring antibodies in your blood. And in particular, we're talking about I, G, G, okay? Immunoglobulin G antibodies. I didn't write that wrong. The other thing is um, uh, IgA, but primarily IgG, not IgE, okay? Not this one. Now, why not IgE? Because IgE is associated with anaphylaxis, with swelling of your throat, okay? That's what, when you, you go to your doctor's office and they say, hey, I, I think I've got a food sensitivity. They're like, you know, you don't have a food sensitivity to it because they're thinking food allergy, IgE is a food allergy. We look at IgG, IgA, primarily IgG, showing a past response to a food. And what we do is we remove those. But gluten sensitivity, this is a sensitivity. You know, that would be an anaphylactic allergy, which I've never heard of anyone having an anaphylactic response to gluten. Definitely celiac disease, which is a full-blown raging autoimmune condition against gluten that will cause a major damage to your intestines. Now, Gluten sensitivity is linked to Hashimoto's. About 20-40% of the general population is believed to have a sensitivity to gluten. Okay, So a lot of people do better without gluten, but if Hashimoto's increases the risk of gallbladder surgery, and if Hashimoto's is connection to gluten, then gluten promotes Hashimoto's and could promote gallbladder dysfunction. We find that people that tend to go on gluten-free diets tend to do better with Hashimoto's. It's clinically observed, and there's, a, there's some research that suggests that as well. And you know, a lot of people will, will write about that, and it's, it's not, you know, if you're, if you're researching Hashimoto's and you've come across my video, well, it's, it's pretty common knowledge. Uh, it's believed to be a common thing within the realm of functional medicine. So it's probably not something new to you, and that's, that's good, because it's something that definitely if you have Hashimoto's, you should, you should consider at least trying to eliminate it or getting tested for it. So um, gluten uh, damage to the SI, to the um, small intestine. So if gluten is damaging your small intestine, what it will do is it can decrease the release of cholecystokinin, which is a it's basically is produced in the gut and it helps the sick to signal the gallbladder to release bile. So sometimes people will say, hey, they, they look at their gallbladder on an ultrasound and they do a test and they say, hey, your gallbladder is not working. It's just it's not functioning. It's 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 there, but it's not functioning. It may not necessarily have gallstones, but they just say it's not functioning. So maybe could that be because of you know signals to the gallbladder uh, to release bile are being impaired because there's not good cholecystokinin because the intestines are inflamed. So there's a problem with the intestines. Well, that's one of the potential mechanisms. And so the thing, guys, is that the gallbladder is critically important for fat digestion. So your fats, the gallbladder stores bile, which has bile salts. When, when your food moves from the stomach into the small intestine and there's acidity, there's the stomach acid moves with the food into the small intestine, that triggers the gallbladder to contract and squirt or release bile, which has bile salts and a lot of things that help us to break down and absorb fat, okay? Emulsify the fat so it can be absorbed. Your vitamins A, D, E, and K are all 
fat soluble vitamins, meaning they absorb with fat. So if you can't absorb fat, you're, you're, you might have a, a, a very difficult time absorbing your fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, which are really important. And in that case, you might want to take either a sublingual or an emulsified form of these that, so that it can pass through the mucous membrane and get into the, the bloodstream without really having to go through the digestive tract. But anyway, you also, if you can't absorb fat well, you, you will have some problems very likely with hormone production. Because guess what? Your hormones all start with cholesterol, and cholesterol is derived from fat. So if you don't have cholesterol, you can't make your hormones efficiently. Okay? And there's you know, your brain and some, your, the covering of your nerves, it's all dependent upon fat and fat absorption. So the gallbladder is extremely important, guys. And here's the thing. If it's removed, don't worry. I mean, there's, there's other things you can do. Ox bile is something that we regularly recommend people take with food. With each meal, they take ox bile with it. It's just a tablet. And the ox bile helps them to emulsify and break down the foods. Uh, the other thing is um, you can also try some supplements like things that I've seen before. And before you try anything I'm telling you, talk to your doctor to make sure it's okay with them. Okay, I'm not giving you advice. I'm just telling you things that we've seen work clinically. So problems like, uh, some of the, if you have problems, things like milk thistle, uh, dandelion root, ginger root are amongst uh, some of the things that we'll see uh, very effectively help to thin the bile and improve production of the bile. Staying well hydrated is also important. But guys, this is critical. Your gallbladder is really important. It's not something you want to neglect. Uh, it's something you want to keep if you possibly can because it's really important with the absorption of a lot of important vitamins that actually are, act like hormones in the body. It's important for hormone production. It's important for fat, for fat absorption, which is critical, critical to your health. And there's some things that you can do if you've already had it removed, like the ox bile. You can take some supplementation. Uh, maybe if your doctor says it's okay, that may uh, be beneficial uh, to help thin the bile and with the bile production. So guys, if you need help with this, if you're trying to figure out what to do to help yourself dietarily, like you hear all these different things about what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and you're not sure, well, we've used dietary programs in our office for years. And throughout that time, we refined our dietary programs and incorporated lifestyle recommendations and temporary nutritional supplementation, we found pretty good protocols to work for someone that is, um, has, doesn't have testing to help you be more specific with what to do. And what we did is we created a program called the Six Week Hashimoto's Transformation Program. If you're interested in that, you can go to thyroidprogram.com. You can register to win it. We give it away once per month. And if you, when you register to, to, to uh, you enter the program, you can have an opportunity to purchase it if you'd like to. But we do have that program, and it's, we have a Facebook support group. There are 10 video and guidebook-based modules that we walk you through to really try to help you plan and organize your, your diet and how you're going to incorporate it into your life. And then we go into the dietary program itself and what we recommend as far as eating and meal planning. Then we get into lifestyle recommendations and things as you go a little further to really help you try to approach this as holistically as possible. We even walk you through in the beginning on how to assess yourself and help you better determine what type of nutritional supplementation might be best for you so that you can get this semi-customized nutritional protocol that's really could be very, very beneficial because most people have breakdown and dysfunction in different areas of their, of their body that could be contributing to Hashimoto's and, and just poor health. So we try to help you customize it, customize it as much as possible and we get you in our Facebook support group and really try to help give you some good advice and direction. So you can check it out there at thyroidprogram.com. And if you're really frustrated and you just want someone to help, help you try to organize this and put the pieces together, I work with people around the world. We do consulting and I help people to organize this and um, help them determine what kind of tests might be needed. We can help you get testing. We can help you interpret and understand the testing and ultimately put together a, a structured plan to help you really work through trying to improve and dampen your, your autoimmunity and improve your thyroid. So guys, if you, you're interested in that, just go to drbradshook.com, click on application for care, and you can, you can learn more about that. But I hope this helps you guys out a lot. I really appreciate you being here today. I hope this is informative. And as always, guys, if this has helped you, please help us help other people by sharing this because what we're trying to do is teach people to become empowered, to take their health back, to, um, to really become their own advocates, and to work as better partners with their healthcare providers. There's a lot of talk and, um, and there, there's a lot of um, adversary, you know, the, I think it's just the wrong approach to be adversarial and say we've got to fight and we've got to fight to, you know, take our health back. And I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be reform and that there doesn't need to be, you know, these, that, that functional medicine needs to be an option. 
it needs to be an option, a covered option with your insurance, which it's it's not. It needs to be it needs to be an option for you. And so you're going to have to fight for that. You're going to have to talk to your insurance companies. You're going to have to you're going to have to um, really try to you know, promote that and get that included. But the thing that's not appropriate is really butting heads with your doctors and being being uh, really defensive because guys they don't know a lot of this stuff either. This is all stuff I learned postgraduate studies through the Institute for Functional Medicine through learning from Datis Karazian and a lot of other brilliant brilliant doctors that I had the opportunity to learn from and that I still learn from. And this is not so this is not stuff that your doctors are going to get in medical school. It's just not there yet. It's not in any school. This is all postdoctoral stuff that you got to get. So just realize that what you're learning, they may not know that and they have a lot of expertise to help you, but you always listen it's, I always you always take the high road, guys. Don't don't try to argue and and fight with someone that doesn't understand where you're coming from, and that's only trying to protect your health. That's what they're really trying to do. And a lot of times, doctors they they're they're faced with people coming in with you know Doctor Google. They've looked on the internet and they're now experts on something, and they come in and they talk to the doctor, and they challenge them. And then the reality is is that within that insurance based business model, you know, 15 minutes would be a long time to spend with a doctor. And really to get into some of these topics and concepts that they're not going to be familiar with them, guys. And they're not bad people. They're great people. They didn't get into healthcare. Believe me, they didn't get into healthcare for an easy job. It is a stressful job. And they're trying to help you out. Just, just know that there's a right and wrong way to do it. I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to teach them. I'm trying to you know, empower you guys and, and just increase awareness, right? So the gallbladder, I'll stop, I'll stop lecturing. The gallbladder is really important. And uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Diet's a great place to start. Our program works really well for a lot of people. If you need help, I'll be happy to help give you some guidance the best that I can. Okay, so guys, I appreciate you so much. Please share this with the other with other people. Help us get the word out. Help us to become our own advocates to, to really help us take our health back and, and, and work better as partners with our doctor. So I appreciate you so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Hope you hope you have a good night. Hey guys, Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to, just subscribe to our channel somewhere here. You can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you, so hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook, and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day.